Chapter Twenty Five of Iracema, the Honey Lips, The Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Five. Joy still reigned in the cabin during the whole time, whilst the ears of corn ripened and waxed yellow. Once at break of day, the Christian was strolling by the borders of the sea. His soul was weary. The hummingbird satiates itself with honey and perfume. It then sleeps in its little white nest of cotton until another year comes round with its moon of flowers. Like it, the warrior's soul is sated with happiness. It wants sleep and repose. Hunting and excursions in the mountains with his friend by his side, the tender caresses of the wife awaiting his return, the pleasant carbeto in the wigwam porch no longer awakened in him emotions as they were wont to do. His heart began to speak. Iracema was sporting on the beach. His eyes wandered from her over the sea's vast expanse. Large white wings were seen hovering over the blue waste. The Christian knew that it was a big igada of many sails, such as were constructed by his brethren, and the saudade of his country wrung his breast. High rose the sun. The warrior on the shore followed with his eyes the white wings as they fled. In vain the wife called him to the hut. In vain she displayed to his eyes her graces, or offered him the best fruits of the country. The warrior never moved until the sail disappeared behind the horizon. Pochi returned from the Serra, where, for the first time, he had been alone. He had left serenity on his brother's countenance, and now he found there sorrow. Martin went forth to meet him. The great Igara of the white Tapuya is on the sea. The eyes of Pochi's brother saw them flying towards the banks of the Meari. They are the allies of the Tupinambash, and the enemies of his and my race. Pochi is lord of a thousand bows. If Quachiabu wishes, he will accompany him with his braves to the bank of the Mearim, to conquer the Tapuichinga and his friends, the treacherous Tupinambash. When it is time, Pochi's brother will tell him. The warriors returned to the cabin where Iracema was. The sweet song today was silent on the wife's lips. She wove amidst her sighs the fringe of the maternal hammock, broader and thicker than the marriage cot. Pochi, who saw her thus occupied, spoke. When the Sabia sings, it is the season of love. When, silent, it makes the nest for the little one, it is the time for work. My brother speaks like the wren announcing the rain. But the sabiá which makes its nest does not know if it will sleep in it. The voice of Iracema trembled. Her eyes sought Martin. He was thinking. The words of Iracema passed over him, like the breeze upon the smooth surface of the rocks, noiseless and echoless. The sun still shone on the sea beach, and the sands reflected its ardent rays. But neither the light which came from heaven nor that which earth gave could drive darkness from the Christian soul. Every moment the twilight deepened on his forehead. Arrived from the banks of the Acaraú, a Pichiguara warrior, sent by Jacauna to his brother Pochi. He had followed the warrior's trail as far as the Trairi, whence the fisherman had guided him to the wigwam. Pochi was alone in the porch. He rose up and bent his head, to listen with more gravity and respect to the words which his brother had sent him by the mouth of the messenger. The Tapuichinga, who was in the Mearim, came through the forests as far as the beginning of the Ibiapaba, where he had made an alliance with Irapuã to fight the Pichiguara nation. They are coming down the Serra to the banks of the river where the herons drink and where Pochi raised the taba of his warriors. Jacauna now summons him to defend the lands of our fathers, and his people want their greatest warrior. The warrior must return to the banks of Acaraú, and his foot must not rest 
until it has trodden the floor of Jacauna's wigwam. When he arrives, he will say to the great chief, Jacauna's brother has arrived at the taba of his warriors, and he will not lie. The messenger departed. Pochi aroused himself and walked towards the plains, guided by the trail of Quachiabo. He met him far beyond, wandering amongst the reeds and rushes which border the banks of Jacaratui. The white tapuya is in the Viapaba to help the tabajaras against Jacauna. Pochi is hastening to defend the land of his brothers and the taba where sleep the camosins of his fathers. He will know how to conquer quickly in order to return to Quachiabo. Pochi's brother goes with him. Nothing separates two warrior friends when sounds the Nubia of war. My brother is great like the sea and good like the sky. The two friends embraced and marched with their faces turned to the quarter of the rising sun. End of chapter 25